Good evening and welcome to your evening news bulletin with Television Tonga. Making headlines, Her Royal Highness Princess Pilolevu Tuita to attend the World Women's Day of Prayer tomorrow morning. Electricity tariff to drop by 1.48 seniti per kilowatt per hour in March. Tuberculosis cases in decline in Tonga and Ministry of Health records a second dengue case this year. These are more stories together with news from the Pacific, sports and the weather forecast to follow later on in this bulletin. Now for the news in details, I'm Kalolai Netonglava Paletua. The electricity tariff rate is expected to drop by 1.48 seniti per kilowatt per hour in March. The current price is 93.21 seniti per kilowatt per hour. Once the new price is implemented on March 1st, the new power price will drop to 91.78 seniti per kilowatt per hour. According to information from Tonga Power Limited, the drop in, in electricity tariff rates is due to a decline in the international crude oil prices. The decline in the power price is also an effect of the solar farm facilities in Papua and Vavao. These farms help reduce the reliance on imported oil. Tonga Power Limited says if the solar farm savings did not exist, the overall electricity price would be 95.95 seniti per kilowatt per hour. Tonga will join other countries in the world, marking the World Women's Day of Prayer tomorrow morning. This will be held at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception of Mary at Malfanga, and Her Royal Highness Princess Pilev Duita is expected to attend the event tomorrow. Anasil Falikaono with the details. Each year, different countries highlight a different theme. This year's theme is Streams in the Desert. Her Royal Highness Princess Salote Mafile of Bilolevu Duita will attend as the guest of honor at the World Women's Day of Prayer. This was confirmed to Television Tonga News by the President of the Women of the Diocese of Tonga and Nui Committee, Mafitu Po. A mass service will be led by Bishop Baini Mafi and the theme shared by the Vicar General, Fata Itakolomatangi. The number of tuberculosis or TB cases in Tonga has seen a significant decline over the years. This is also a result of effective public awareness programs on TB. A four-day workshop of TB further reinforces the issue. Anasil Falikaono tells you more. According to the Ministry of Health's National Officer for Tuberculosis, Saya Betani, in past years, they have recorded more than 40% of tuberculosis or TB cases in Tonga. Recently, the number has dropped to less than 10%. Some people who are admitted to hospital for TB also suffered on other non-communicable diseases. People need to know how to avoid or minimize the risk of getting through these awareness programs. Community also need to work together in combating it. Mr. Betani says they will appeal for assistance to international donors to help fight TB. This program aims to educate the people of Tonga so they will know the causes of TB and they can avoid the cause and to prevent themselves from getting this communicable disease. Plans are underway to request for assistance to the World Health Organization to help combat the disease. The program is attended by representatives from the Ministry of Health in Tongatapu and the Outer Islands, representatives from the community, the media and other stakeholders. The workshop is held at the Basilica Church's conference room and is funded by the Global Fund Department of the World Health Organization. An Irish man in Hapai who attempted to commit suicide has been sent to Vala Hospital. Reports from the Ministry of Police said the 36-year-old is the owner of the new Akalo Beach in Holopeka. When the man was discovered, he had suffered an injury to his chest. It's believed that the incident occurred because his business had suffered much damage from the cyclone. Moreover, someone had informed his mother, who's overseas, 
that his business would not be able to recover from this disaster. The man was rushed to New Ui Hospital at 7 p.m. that evening before the doctors made the call for him to be transported to Nukalofa for further medical attention. He was transported on a French aircraft and accompanied by police officers and a medical officer. The Ministry of Health has recorded a second case of dengue fever this year. Both cases were reported to Vala Hospital in the month of February. The Chief Medical Officer at Vala Hospital's Public Health Division, Dr. Malakai Ake, confirmed this to Radio and Television Tongue News today. Linda Filai with more on that story. The Chief Medical Officer at Viola Hospital Public Health Division, Dr. Ake, warns the public to minimize the threats of an outbreak of dengue by cleaning up surrounding areas and homes so it can be free of mosquito breeding areas. The two patients who suffered from dengue fever are from Nukunuku and Havelu. It is important to report every dengue case to the hospital so that we address it quickly. Health officers have taken measures to minimize the threats of dengue by carrying out a vector control program. They sprayed the surrounding homes of the two dengue patients in order to kill mosquitoes in their breeding areas. If an adult suffers from dengue fever, I advise that person to drink four to six liters of water a day. If it's a minor or young person, to drink at least two to four liters of water a day. Dr. Ake says other precautions to use are mosquito goals and nets. The most important things for the public to know that dengue virus affect the blood vessel and this result in bleeding or blood leaking out of the body tissue. This is why we always advise to drink a lot of water because it will help. In the past days, a lot of people make fun of the advice we give out and this resulted that death from dengue fever continues which is later diminished. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health recorded six deaths from dengue fever in 2005, three in 2006, and one in 2008. Dengue fever is spread by a chupitai mosquito, which is black and white spotted mosquito. New Zealand is yet to deport back to Tonga around 30 overstayers. According to Radio Australia, some of the overstayers in New Zealand are destined to be deported back to the cyclone-struck island of Hapai. Speaking to Radio Tonga News, the Deputy Police Commissioner Onga Fawa says there's a process involved when people are deported to Tonga, whereas New Zealand must first inform Tonga and relevant authorities before that person is deported. Fawa says he's aware of New Zealand media reports about pending the deportees to Tonga and they've yet to be officially informed about it. The matter of New Zealand deporting back Tongans to Hapai was initially brought up to New Zealand's Member Parliament from the opposition Labour Party of Mangri, Sua William Seal. He said deporting these people back to Hapai will not help anyone. The matter was also brought up to New Zealand's Minister of Pacific Island Affairs, Beseta Sem Lotulinga, which he denies. It also became an issue on social websites such as Facebook, attracting the attention of the leader of the Tongan Advisory Council, Melino Maka, who is advocating against deporting Tongans back to Abai, which is undergoing extensive recovery re efforts. The commander of the United States Pacific Command in Honolulu, Hawaii, Admiral Samuel Locklear, praised His Majesty's Armed Forces' professionalism on its role to ensure security and stability within the region and also in the international arena. He highlighted this to 15 news reporters, producers and journalists from Asia and the Pacific, including radio and television Tongan news reporter Fatai Fenga'a yesterday. We'll join Sin La Tu with that story. According to radio and television Tonga's reporter, who is in Honolulu, Hawaii, Fatai Fenga'a, Admiral Locklear clarifies that Tongan soldiers' performances has been outstanding due to their tenacious, courageous and professional expertise on what they do. This also refers to Tonga's engagement on a peacekeeping mission in the Middle East. He says because of its long-standing ties with military personnel from developing countries like Tonga, it is part of their commitment to ensure that Tonga obtains equipment and training they need with the U.S. military's help. This, however, can be achieved through a clear understanding of Tongan soldiers' capabilities and most pressing needs. 
He also emphasizes that part of their engagement throughout Asia and the Pacific is to ensure security stability in their home countries. He also confirms that he will pay an official visit to Tonga for a high-level defense dialogue with their Tongan counterpart in April this year. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sini Lato. And there's a possibility that a Tongan woman, Jenny Falatu Salesa, or known as Jenny Salesa, will become the first Tongan to enter New Zealand's Parliament House. According to a statement from the President of the New Zealand Labour Party, Moira Coatsworthy, Mrs. Salesa will be the Labour's candidate for the Manukau East region in the 2014 general election. Anasil Falekao not with that report. In a statement from the president of the New Zealand Labour Party, Moira Kostworthy, local members have said that the Manukau East electorate needs a member of parliament or MP who understands the people's lives and way of living. Jenny Salesa has an outstanding record of working with people and communities. It is believed she will be a strong advocate for people of Manukau East dealing with housing, unemployment state services and a range of other issues. The candidate has extensive experience in voluntary and community work in New Zealand, Tonga and the US. Jennifer Salesa is the chairperson of the New Zealand Ha'apai Relief Fund Committee, a separate committee established by the Tongan community in Auckland aiming to assist the victims in Ha'apai after Tropical Cyclone Ian's visit. And that's the local scene. Up next is the latest sports news with Pierre Orlier.